are Geelong, the greatest team of all. We are Geelong, we're always on the ball. We play the game as it should be played. What's going on, Pat? <laughs> An interstate win at the Adelaide Oval, mind you. How good? How good is it? How up and about are you, Paul? How's things feeling, mate? Look, I'm pretty stoked. It was a good result. Um, went over you're the grumpy. town. I tipped. You're so grumpy though. Tip twenty. Look, I, I rarely, I re- in fact, I never, I never actually punt on football, and today was the first time that I actually gave it a genuine crack. Okay. And had Jeremy Cameron decided not to play party tricks in the final term and, you know, trying to take stupid shots, I'd be 100 bucks richer. Only 100 bucks. I'm looking for anything oh, crazy. So it's more about the dollar than, than Geelong being 2-0. Oh. Come on, mate. Come on. Times are tied a bit. better than this. I'll just, throw, I'll just throw a 10 out there and see see what I can reel in by mistake. And uh, I nearly reeled something in until Jezza was taking the P1 double five at the end there. Oh, anyway. I really. Anyway, the I'm, result was great. Let's set I'm that aside. The, the great I'm, I'm very happy with the win. I just, uh, I, I can't help it, and I, I do try. I really do try to not let my my frustration at umpires and sometimes non decisions get in the way of a good result. Um, we won the game. We should be focusing on the fact that we won the game. We were two and zero, and Tommy Stewart is the best player ever that's ever played the game of footy in his life. Uh, how good was this? Uh, be more like Corey. Just lose your, lose your nails. I hope your nails are going to grow back there, Corey. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Yes, the Cats did have a win. Uh, 14 goals, 12, 96 to 11 goals, 11, 77. What are we kicking that last quarter, Paul? Like six behind straight or something um, like that before we got a couple it. goals late? But no, the, Yeah. No, the six behinds, when did that happen? Oh, we was, were 12, goals, we were 12 goals, six at one point. I'm looking at the wrong side of the worm. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, and then there was just a big rut of them for a while there. Kind of gave them a little sniff, but um, you felt like they always kind of had the game in hand, even when Adelaide kind of really pushed at them in the third and even even pinched the lead there. But, yep. um, yeah, you kind of always felt like they had it in hand. It was very much that, that kind of arm wrestle where, you know, they, they got – they got it back to little and you just pushed them back in place again and you just kept pushing them back down until eventually you snuffed them out at the end. So it was good. And uh as as I the moment is is dropping in the in the chat there, no Duncan, no Bruin, no Atkins, no worries. And uh let me just add into that uh no Nevitt, because uh you basically no Nevitt. 30, well, he's 30 like, seconds he's of like, the game today. I played a minute and uh and and uh Three three seconds or something like that. Anyway. Or bloke is going to be running laps of that ground for the next hour and a half. Oh mate, uh, <laughs> to, get, to get his numbers up, he can catch and he's the flight. Been running seventeen k tra- uh, training sessions. I remember from that open session that we went to. Exactly. So he's got a bit of running ahead of him tonight. Enjoy, mate. <laughs> G'day, sports fan. Thanks for joining us on the chat. If you want to, if you want to jump in uh, the chat a bit later on, I'll, I'll post the. Uh, I'm going to post a link to the chat soon. I might get a couple other people on uh, after I've had a chat with. I've got Brendan and uh, Bianca sitting there, future All of Fame, IFLW Hall of Fame player Bianca, ready to come on shortly. Uh, stayed up very late. Well done, Bianca, for staying up this late. You, I know you love your catters. Uh, we'll get you on in a sec. Um, hopefully, Dad leaves your staff just a little bit longer. Uh, highlights for you, Paul, for this game? Um, the the mark that nearly was. No, oh, He's still up in the air. Tommy's in the air. <laughs> La, da, da, da. Tommy's in the air. Tommy was in I orbit. I can't sing, people. Yeah. You, I cannot sing. Um, oh Lower levels of the, of the stratosphere we found Tom Stewart in at one point there. So, um, Would that have been that's, an intercept that's mark? That's a shame that you didn't hang on to that. Was that going to be an intercept mark if he took that? Of course it would have been. Because he uh, broke the record was, tonight. He broke the record. E- equaled, I believe, was what I was hearing. Equal. So I'll, I'm there. calling it breaking. Whatever. Um, he'll break it before his time's done. He dropped the car. That's what he did. He definitely dropped the car. That's for sure. As as Tom himself said, apparently. So. Correct. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Who else have we got in the chat? Oh, the chat. Jake. Jake's here as well. Umpires can't stop here. This is bad country. Yep. <laughs> um, welcome to the chat, Jake. Hope you're nice and snug in uh, 
when you've been out of way. Uh, didn't get to the Adelaide game. Didn't feel like the nine-hour drive this time, Jake. Uh, th- the three-hour drive, getting home at 3.30 last weekend was too much for you. So I'll, I'm clearly at home. Paul's at home in the garage. Uh we're all, we're all here still. A lot of people got to the game. I did see a few people uh, that we know at the game in the in the crowd behind what the goals. Uh, I think Kyrie, who's who often jumps into this uh, fan, uh, this um, post game live, he he was there as well. I think he's Adelaide based, so uh, I think he's going to try and get in if he can. Uh, g'day, go time AFL. How are you going up the catters? Thanks for joining us in the chat. Uh, I might just copy that link, Paul, actually. I might just do that now just to get that going. Yeah, I'll just post in let's, in the chat. Let's, let's get people going. So if anyone um, wants to jump in the chat, and we'll, uh, I'll get you in there. Thoughts on the game? More thoughts on the game, Paul. Let's, uh, what, are you, what did you? Yeah, checking checking the brilliance of Tom Stewart and betting inside because we don't really want to focus on the on the lesser sides of the game. Um, it, was a, it was a good team performance. I don't really – I can't really think of anyone who especially struggled. Um, you could still see that um, – Jai Clark is still getting to kind of the speed of the game and the intensity of it, especially when things ratchet up a little bit. Um, but also I think he was darted once or twice too when it came to a couple of decisions for holding the ball where he, I, don't, I would argue he didn't have sufficient time or opportunity, but yep. he'll he'll learn he'll learn that anyway. And he's still a small body, so he does get kind of thrown around a little bit at the moment. Um, that, that will absolutely come. Uh, as as um, Cash Clay is saying, and I guess I dropped it, I think within about five minutes of the game starting for us, uh, Parfit really stepped up across the entire game. I was really impressed by the first five minutes alone, but he, he really brought that pressure. I would say he's, and I'd, ha- I'd have to check some quarter by quarter numbers. I feel like his output probably waned a little bit as the game went on, but he was always a presence. Um, five clearances, eight, uh, nine tackles. He, he was always there. He was always a body. And as Jackie McDonald was saying, he was pressure. I think when I think of Parfit's game, it was just pressure, pressure, pressure. All game, it was awesome. And there was a lot of them that brought that too. It was great. Colin's a bit slow on the buttons tonight, people, so sorry about that. Paul's just jumping ahead. But, uh, Colin, keep up with Paul. Uh, we need you. Colin is our Mate, man. I'm working back. that chat and I'm working my own thoughts and blending them together. Got a, it's... Uh, he's got his van out the back. It's not part. He's not in the studio. He's got a, a separate van, just like the TV crews. There, He's at the back, but he's not. He, his headset's not always working. He's not always in sync. <laughs> he's, he's still pretty new. He, he's a bit more familiar with the chaps than he is with us. But uh, I've got anyway. one query red flag question mark off the back of our first two games and i don't like considering we've, just, we've had a we've had two fantastic wins we know that i'm known for kind of coming after one person it's not the per, it's not that person i'm coming for here but um i'm not overly crazy about reese stanley's output so far this season and i'm sure he will take time and i can already see brendan bianca chuckling away in the background there i don't know i, yep. I like I like Reece Stanley. I've got a lot of time for Reece Stanley. I certainly wasn't one of those that was kind of crying out his name when, you know, you, you know, come years ago. But it's just, I don't know, maybe he just hasn't quite found his momentum yet. And I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, that kind of clicks soon because we do know that Toby's breathing down his neck. Um, he's obviously, well, we seem to think that he's, you know, the likely, the future in terms of like a, a long-term chilly. future. Um but if he wants to keep him out, then I think he's going to need to step up the efforts a little bit. And he's he's come across a pretty decent ruckman tonight in Riley O'Brien. Let's let's not sell him short. Um, and he, I don't know, I don't know if he was carrying a little bit with um, whatever happened early in the game. There was there's some kind of leg injury that he went down the race for. It didn't seem like it was much in the end, but maybe it was impacting him a little bit more than it should. Like I hope, I hope, honestly, I hope, I hope it was that because I'd like to see Reese out Reese out there. Um, I think he brings something that most ruckmen don't, which is that speed and endurance. Um, most of them just don't have it. No, but yeah, he's just he's just been a little bit off so far. So I hope I hope that that form turns around nice and soon. I'd say they'd probably give him um, a bit of a break coming up soon. Anyway, um, we'll see. Hopefully, Toby Conway goes okay in the VFL. I think that's at Canadian Park tomorrow, around about two ish or thereabouts. If anyone wants to get along. Uh, and the VFL uh, women's team are playing tomorrow morning as well, about eleven o'clock. So if you want to go check out some of those guys, because I think there's quite a few. There might be like eight or eight or nine AFL listed players going around in the VFL tomorrow. So it might be worth checking that. Hopefully, Definitely it comes through it that pretty well. Um, it is. It is a bit of a break between. What is it? Friday night. We play Monday. You know, in a week and a bit. So it's quite a not, nice long break. So he might. It might be enough time to get over it. But um, you do want to get some games in a Toby anyway. So. Yeah. So, as as Corey says, maybe Toby needs to come in now. 
Uh, hello to anyone else who's just joined us in the chat soon. Uh, thank you for that. Hope you enjoyed the Cats win. Um, we're here to talk about a little bit about it, mate. I want to talk a bit about Grian Myers. Um, is he just has he been listening to us, Paul? As we've been talking a lot about Grian, how, how we love him, but uh, we've we've been really encouraging him to kick some more goals. And geez, he's getting hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> he's um, to do in the first quarter and a shank in the last, I and then finished off with a goal. He's just come to realise that all Australian selectors clearly don't value goal assists enough, so he thought he'd just <laughs> add a few more goals on top of it as well, maintaining the goal assists at the same time because he got two of those tonight as well as as well as putting yes. three goals between the sticks as well. So, and uh, twenty six disposals. I think there's a good argument to be made that he's he's BOG from this one. Really? Oh, geez, well, I'm, I don't sorry, know about I'm, that. Not, I'm not saying he is. I said there's an argument that could be made. Paul um, said that when you twenty six, <laughs> three goals, two goal assists. And the the bloke that you know nearly set a record for intercept marks only had a couple more touches than you. There's an are argument. You prepared, anyway. Are you are you prepared to give a hint as to whether he might appear in your your three two one votes for I'll the hoopies? I haven't I haven't thought that too far early. Yet. Um, too early days. I, I, I honestly, know. right now, I feel like you could throw a blanket over over those two, and you could make make an argument for any any of those two for for BOG as far as I'm concerned. All credit yep. to Danger again, really impactful at key points in the game. Um, there, there was a whole range of them. Uh, and, and I guess I've, I kind of alluded to someone that I've kind of had a bit of a, uh, well, I, I don't know, I've been sceptical a little bit about over the preseason um, since kind of that last term last week where I feel like he kind of started to click into gear. Uh, Collar was pretty solid today as well. I was, I was pretty happy. Yeah, with no, that he goal. did some good things. I, I didn't notice it as much at the game last week, but everyone was saying uh, that he, he was great. I, I don't, maybe I just wasn't seeing. I thought he was that. really wobbly early, but that last term, yeah. especially when, when the game was really online, he stepped up and maybe that was just kind of a foot up the rear that maybe he needed to just get himself going. And um, today was, I think he was just fantastic the entire game. I, you know, we, we always get a little bit worried about his kicking and those sort of things at times. Um, didn't didn't feel any of that at all. He looked really confident. He hit his targets. I you know I'll try and bring up the efficiency nice and quick. But um, it was it was a really really good game for him. I, I really can't think of too many weaknesses in the in the Cats lineup today. And I think that's why no. when when Adelaide would push, and you know credit to them, they're, they're a good team. And I you know I think we've both got them tipped yep. for finals this year. Um, they're going to challenge those top teams. But when you get challenged, you want to respond. And I think a team effort is what kept him at bay. Looks like Jake's given his tips here. Three, two, one. Uh, sorry, Shelly. Three, two, one. Stewie, Myers, and close. Uh, close, close. Got better as the game went on. I not think, e- but, uh, not even, not even. Close. Jake, if you want it, if you want it, I'll, I'll allow you to modify these votes between now you, and you got the end think. of the weekend. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how we go with that. Um, Ethan, hello, welcome to the chat. Uh, what's Ethan saying here? I'll get, I'll get you on soon, Banker. Don't worry, it won't be too much longer. Uh, yeah, I'll shut up in a sec if that's what you want. Yeah. Conway the be- got the best of English in his last one. He- Paul keeps telling us about this. Uh, he should be the uh, uh, well, that's, he's the challenger. So you beat the you beat the champ. You, sh- you become. I'm the just champ, a lowly math works. teacher, but I think if you beat the best, that makes you the best, right? So, Toby Conway, for whatever reason, he's not. Uh, the, the, he's the world champ, uh, but they're, <laughs> they're keeping in the in the magoos at the moment. Uh, uh, Paul, before you go, I just want to ask you, yes. what did you think of our, of our, our man? I'm, I'm calling you my man now, um, Ollie Dempsey. Uh, I'm him. claiming him. Uh, I thought I was really, really hoping that he would back up his performance from last week, and I thought he did everything. I didn't expect him to set the world on fire and kick another three goals, but I just wanted him to just do all those right things, and I, and I think we saw it. What did you think? Yeah, I, I think we still saw that poise. I think like there was a bit more sting, to, and not to discredit St Kilda too much last week, because, again, they brought it especially late. Um, but he really brought that poise that I think you want to see when when the game's on the line and and you've got a really excellent opponent charging at you and he he held his ground well. Um, I think he put in a really amazing effort. So yes, he didn't kick the three goals, and so no, it's not going to be the sort of game that's necessarily going to set your rising star voters nah. ablaze. But at the same time, I think when you're talking about what really matters for Geelong, which is the the team success, he absolutely did his job. No, I think so. Oh, mate, I could go through every player with you, but I'll save some yeah, for shut everyone me up. else. Shut we've, you we've up. Got, we've got a whole other show for this, so kick me out of here. <laughs> uh, what a win, Paul! Thanks for thanks for jumping on. Uh, we'll catch you on the. We'll probably catch you on Sunday night, I guess. So yeah, I'll, uh, thanks, I'll buzz around here for a while anyway. All right, buddy. Thanks, mate. All right, you've been waiting very patiently there, Bianca and Brendan, I should say. Welcome to the show. Go Catters! Go Cats! How good is that? Uh, did you? 
did you think in your heart of hearts, Bianca, that we were going to win this game tonight? Or were you a bit nervous? Well, da- Daddy was screaming and... Um, really? <laughs> yes, he was screaming. Um, he was screaming um, in the garage. And um, I was just walking around um, saying, uh, we have to stay in this game. We did, though, didn't we? We played really smart football in the fourth quarter. It wasn't pretty all the time, but we did all the things that a a very experienced, well-drilled team does. And sometimes it's not always the best-looking football, but they just did enough. And Adelaide, you know, they're a good team, but I think they need a few more years. Uh, And I think they'll be a good team one day. But Geelong's still a little bit too smart for Adelaide just at this point. What did you think, Brendan? How did you read the game tonight? Uh, I've been thinking all week. I thought I didn't think we were going to win, but I thought it would be it'd be really really tight. But then when I heard before the game that we'd lost uh, Duncan and Atkins, I go, oh okay then. Well, hopefully we can just get some positives out of it. Hopefully, like some of the young players like Clark and that can show some more signs. And but then by quarter time, I'm like, we're in this. <laughs> like, yeah. we're a chance of winning this. What is going on? <laughs> and then I started getting more emotional and more passionate like come on let's just keep going like <laughs> and then i just i can't speak more highly of Parfit. just yeah like, he just did what he had to do he didn't like yep. he just had to break even and just give us um a contest and he did it and we got the win and like i thought last week that it was almost the perfect round one win you don't want to like come out and just tear the like tear the no. house down good win. point you want to come out and like Show some signs, have a have a good close win, but also understand that there's heaps of room for improvement. I think we did the same thing to um tonight because it's an interstate win. Like we yeah. got so much room for improvement, and everybody contributed. Like it, our, our list just seems so deep right now. Exactly. I thought it was good to see. I saw some more positive signs from Sam DeConning. I thought he. I mean, he didn't. He's not going to set the world on fire, and he's not going to have 25, 26 touches and. Um, and and run forward and kick a goal all the time. But I liked what I saw from him. Tell me about Zach Guthrie. Did you see that in the last quarter when he just went at the ball? And yeah. not only that, not only did he put his head over it, but he he tapped it out to our advantage as well. That was incredible. That that reminded me of, yeah, we've seen it all week in the highlights of people posting it on Twitter and socials of the Tom Stewart effort yeah. play. Uh, and I just that just kept coming back to me. It's like, oh, my God, that could have been the match winner, that. Um and 100%. just to think where he's come from in the last few years yeah. um, to that, it's like, oh, my God, that just fills me with so much pride. I'm so happy for the guy. I didn't think he'd ever put on any size. He just looked like a little child, like, for so <laughs> long. And now he just nah. uh, he looks like an absolute beast. He's, uh, yeah. he's unbelievable. But he always looked like it from his, from his debut game. I remember, like, he just had no fear. Like, he looked like he had the confidence that he was just 100 kilos and yep. six. Like, he looked, he looked like... That's what he believed he was. And now all of a sudden he's got the frame for it. Yeah. And, yeah, it's, it's, and he just oh, breaks so those cool. lines, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, he, he what I worry about, um, are they, I, I'm not really worried, but I, what I think opposition teams will eventually catch on to is that he his kicks generally have a, a pretty set range of 40 to 50 metres. They He doesn't – he generally sort of runs at the ball and kicks at 50 metres. So um, yeah. once – opposition scouting reports tend to sort of catch on a little bit. They'll start setting up for that a little bit better. Um, but Jesus is so damaging when he gets it. He's, he's incredible. Um, and just that play in the last quarter. I want to watch highlights of that on replay. And I guarantee you they'll play that at the club through the week. Um, yeah. That was a massive moment. Um, what else did you like from the game tonight, Bianca? Any other big moments for you that uh, – did you like Ryan Myers? And he, he kicked three goals. Yeah, but I also um liked the bad close goal after oh, yeah. uh, from the midfield. That wasn't even supposed to be a goal, but it somehow no one touched it and it just kept rolling on, wasn't it? He passed it. Close and also, good I don't tonight. think anyone's brought up uh, Tom Hawkins yet either. No, we he haven't just, got there yet. <laughs> tell me about Tommy. Just showed that he's still there. Like, just bobs up and kicks four goals like it's nothing. Like Also Jezza. And, and Jezza too. Full, full admission, full transparency, I was sitting there watching the game with my wife in bed 
And I said, I don't reckon Hawkins up to it anymore. <laughs> I, I, I actually oh, Hawkins, the oh, Colin on the buttons again. Um, I, feel free to I, pull I that one out again. We made to sub him because we did look really slow at one point. Uh, and then yeah. he just turned it on. And I was like, oh, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Literally kicks three goals after that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, My mum said that um, Tom Hawkins um, isn't doing anything. Yeah. She did. Then she went to bed. Yep. Colin in the chat. Thank you. Um, on the buttons. Um, uh, yeah, Tommy Hawkins, what, four goals straight, I think, tonight? Um, looked at, just looked a shade off it in the first half or first first bit of the game anyway, and then and then it just clicked. And, uh, it's beautiful as well. Oh, absolutely just, gorgeous. Dead eye. We kicked 12 goals six at one stage, and I said this off the top, but – I think they were saying on the commentary that uh, five of those were rushed. Five of those behinds were were rushed. Yeah. So we we essentially just hadn't missed. Um, yeah. It's just we as a when I'm watching opposition teams do that, I just pull my hair out when I say that. It's like, come on, at least uh, at least miss half of them. But um, just was just too good tonight. Our forward line was just functioning beautifully. So fantastic. I got yeah. one for you, one more one more for you, Bianca. What did you think about Jai Clark, the the number thirteen? I think it was his third game tonight. He's still a bit little, but do you think you think he should play next week? Yeah, he was really good around the ball and uh, gained tackles. Yes, yes. The umpires don't like him too much, though. They gave a lot of free kicks against him, but maybe when they get to know him a little bit better, they'll they'll realize how good he's going to be and they'll help him out a little bit more. I don't the know. Umpires, the umpires don't like. All of us. I oh, know. It feels that <laughs> way, doesn't it? Quarter, at the start <laughs> of the last quarter, they were just um, at late free kicks going everywhere. I know. I'm just looking at the stats. Uh, we had, they had 18 free kicks and we had nine. So there you go. Um, we don't get too many, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, I think Geelong played well enough that we didn't need the umpires really. Um, so, but it, yeah, look. I just thought it was more. It was more probably what they weren't paying tonight. It was. Uh, I think was it Max Holmes that got his head ripped off, or was that um, was that Grind Myers that got his head ripped off at one point? Um, but yeah, they probably said. I can't remember who that was. Yeah, they they thought he ducked, and then they went back to the replay, and there was nothing. He just didn't. Nothing even at it. all. Ah, it's a hard um, gig being an umpire. I don't know. Hey, Renegade in the chat. How are you going? Yes, sir. Uh, they did miss a few. They did miss a few. Uh, didn't call a couple of high tackles both ways. Colin is playing with the buttons again. I'm sorry, Colin. Uh, actually, I'm playing with the buttons. Um, what What else before I let you go, guys? Is there anything else, any other players you want to talk about? Is there any other big big moments in the game that, that really caught your eye that you, you want to uh, you talk about? What was it? The Sean Manor goal. Oh, his first one ever. It's... It's great when they kick their first goal, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I did at home when he kicked his first goal? What? I've got a little footstool in front of in front of the TV, and I just went bang bang <laughs> on the on the floor. I just, and my and everyone was just in all my. I've got two. I've got three. I've got three kids, and they all looked at me like I was an idiot. Uh, I got very excited when he kicked that goal. Um, we did want to say though. Good. No, we did want to say though. Just try and get um um uh, what was I going to say? Um, encourage everyone to try and get to the VFLW in VFL tomorrow. It's yes. a double header at GMHBA Stadium. Um, I think the game starts at 11.15 for the VFLW. Right. We've actually got Chantal Mason playing her first game um, in the hoops, wearing number 24. Uh, she's an absolute beast. We watched her play for the Falcons last year. And, and she, kicked, she kicked some uh, big bags of goals. She kicked a bag of seven last year as well. So, uh, yeah, nice. she, she could put on a show tomorrow, and I think it would be um, – It'd be good to get get behind them, you know, because um, there's I think there might be six or seven BFLW players, uh, AFLW players playing. So yeah, there's um, quite a few actually. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, guess what? Yeah, we've got we've got Chantel Mason uh, and uh, Brodo Rourke on right. behind the play with Paul to, uh, on next Tuesday night. So we inter- we uh, Paul interviewed them uh, a few months ago, and they're coming on the show. So uh, that was probably for well, it would have been. 
just before Christmas or just after Christmas or something like that, just after they got drafted to the Cats. So uh, so that'll be an interesting one. But, yes, I agree. If you can get to the game tomorrow, uh, even for a little bit of it, if uh, you know, it's at, it's at Cadenia Park, so you should be at plenty of seats. Um, I was actually hoping you'd be at Deakin because I don't mind getting down to Deakin. Yeah. Um, Deakin's but, um, a lot. I like it. Yeah, it's a nice little feel down there. Thanks, guys. I really, I really love having you guys on the chat. And Bianca, three votes to you for staying up so late. You're a hero, um, and and keep kicking those footies. And and uh, I know you're going well. Uh, good luck trying to get to sleep tonight, Bianca. I'm very excited. I don't think I'll be able to fall asleep tonight. Go cats. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Oh, I just missed her there slightly. Something in the end. Uh, now, what's Corey saying in the chat? Uh, first time since the 22 grand final that we kicked five goals from centre bounce clearance. Wow. I didn't know that. I did not know that. All right. Who have we got? Jack has been. Jack. How are you going, mate? How are we? What a, uh, oh. what a victory. Oh, God. How good. How? 2-0. Oh. I, I I think, did you have the Cats being 2-0 oh uh, before the start of the season oh, or were you a bit more? Injuries reserved? notwithstanding. I probably had, I wanted a 3 out of 5 and I thought that would be a good start with how the season started. 2-0 oh is incredible from those two games with, with the players out. Um, at the deluxe win, I've uh, I woke up with COVID today, so uh, a oh, loss no. there might have finished me off, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> gone a long way to make me feel a lot better, actually. <laughs> up and about tomorrow. Uh, are you in the middle of your COVID at the moment? Are you or are you just uh, starting first, it? First day, um, I've, uh, great. I've just coughed. I've, my partner's been ill all week and I've, I've picked uh, it up now. Oh, well, uh, no good. What's uh, what did you like from the game tonight? Uh, two and zero, as lot, you said, that's great. A lot's already been touched on. Obviously, Stuart, phenomenal. Um, that's how you play a milestone game. Unlike some others, we heard a lot about this week. Um, yep. I, you brought Clark in. I, I love the way he goes about it. I think. Yeah, couple, talk to me about Clark. Heavier. Um, yeah, it, it's something about. I I panic every time he gets near it. After watching, you know, Holmes and Bruin the last few years trying to do the same yep. thing with their body size and coming in young, but he just manages to get the hands free and get the handball out so well. Um, that yeah, once he's that bit stronger and that bit faster, I think he's going to be a real force um, to be reckoned with. I, I couldn't have spoken higher from him tonight. Um, Two and a half the games of three against him was rough, I thought, when Crouch dragged yeah. back in on him. But uh, outside of that, couldn't ask much more. Parfit coming in, not expecting to play. 20 touches. I think he had 10 tackles. Uh, heap of the ball to the middle. Uh, it's the best he's played in about three years. Nine tackles? Yeah. Uh, I five think clearances. Play that well. One goal um, assist. Just awesome. Yep. Uh, at, yep. I, at quarter time, I think he only had two touches, but there was five tackles along with it and then balanced it out the other way for the rest of the game. Um, pressure deluxe. Uh, my, probably my highlight was just the forward line together, um, the way that they're all so creative and so dangerous. Uh, De- Dempsey, Henry, Close, Myers. It's, it's so so many opportunities being created from the speed and skill. Silly question. Mm. What's with all? What's with uh, Hawkins ditching the black boots tonight? He's just gone the uh, the Larry white colour. Is he? It was interesting. I wonder if it was a, a late change. He, he seemed off for the first, I'd say, quarter and a half. Yeah, um, yeah. But boy, did he pick up after that? Maybe he left his boots at home. I don't I'll, know. I'll blame that. I'll blame that for that kick that didn't make the right action when he was uh, yeah. he was kicking from the, the side and everything just slid the wrong way. I reckon that's the new boots. For those uh, for those keen observers, Ollie Henry ditched the the blue boots as well. Uh, so uh, we talk about all the big issues on this show. Um, <laughs> the Ollie did, Henry did just have wore the, the... fixed the hair before taking the uh, mark <laughs> moment. The hair. Which was... <laughs> um, Coach's nine Jeremy hair. Cameron nine disposals. I thought he might have had a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, I still think he was pretty effective and had had the highlight of the night. I don't know if you've had time had time to watch it yet. Um, but his uh, walking up to the uh, bloke who came on the field as the security guards were tackling him and just signaling holding the ball. Uh, I think that's still the highlight of the night, despite not touching much of it. He, his two goals are pretty mm. impressive. Um, yeah, both pretty, oh, pretty big moments. Weren't they? Um, and what a what a comment in the chat about uh, Tui. What a, uh, and it's, we've been pretty positive on the show tonight, but we, we've got to balance things a little bit. What did you think of Tui's game? I mean, did you, I thought he did some really, really good things. Uh, I thought at times he was just a shade off. Yeah. Uh, how did you look, I, was, I was surprised he, he went on another year. Um, I think that if, I'm surprised Buse isn't playing in his place, but I think if Bose is fit, that that's the change that needs to be made. Um, I think he's such a good distributor um, and doesn't have that inch of pace that Tui's, Tui's lost. 
uh, it's, it's got to be made. I, I think that there's so many times he gets caught out thinking he can play like he did three years ago. He just doesn't quite have the uh, the leg speed or the the leg power with the kicks as he used to. I think um I think that's affecting the fact that he's so rushed now because he doesn't he's lost some of those physical attributes and that speed. He seems that his decision making is a little bit rushed as well, and it, and at times it feels like he's he's not making the right choice. Um, or, or, or putting a teammate in pressure uh, where he was pretty rock solid, um, uh, you know, two or three years ago in that regard. So, uh, but that that comes with time. And I, I, look, I, I I always thought Tui would probably play not every game. I didn't think he was going to play twenty games this year, even even if he was fit. Um, but you know, he's he's in a team that's two and zero. So, how many changes are you going to make? I don't like making changes. When you three changes to a winning side, but um, next man up and we win again. So maybe I don't know. Maybe we just keep him in the team until until he gets injured or until he needs a rest. Yeah. Or have a it's hard to find room for blokes to go out when you have a win like that. Um, it was such yeah. a complete team performance. Um, two blokes yeah. I'd like to highlight, especially obviously us doing a, a backman's podcast on our end. Um, I thought yes. Colo was brilliant again. Um, Baby Guff just ha- has come on a lot. He, he's always had clean hands, but Colo just seems to have lost that one or two big areas he used to have a game um, just three or so years now. He's just been so consistent. Um, it's, just, it's just been huge. He was in the second half, I think probably the most important defender. I agree. Yeah. No, I, I think a fair call to, to Kola Dashney. I think uh, he, he deserves a bit of love from the Cats fans. He's probably that, that grind Myers of um, 2021 uh, that everyone was on grinds back. And then, sorry, not 2021 uh, might've been 20, 20, might have, was it 22 or 20? Yeah, I can't was, remember, but was everyone was on yeah. Grind Myers for a bit there. And then he's turned it all around. And there's always got to be a whipping boy, and it, it seems to be Colin Dashney's taken that uh, that title off him. And so glad to see I think he's it is shifting proven. a bit to the aforementioned Tui. So um, I, I prefer yeah. it's no one, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be someone. Um, there'll be people out there that watch the game and are just hating on uh, Jai Clark right now. Um, yeah. And I think. How old is this boy? How small is this boy right now? Um, he will be a gun in years to come, and you won't turn him into a gun unless you give him some opportunities. Um, I don't think yeah. he plays every single game this year. No way. Um, but I want to yeah, see I, I him have, with, have runs of five or six games. With so much of the midfield injured at the moment, with no Guthrie, yeah. obviously no Bruin this week, no Duncan. He's just got to play, and every every bit of game time you see, he looks a bit better. So. Um, I think he was a lot better this week than last week, and hopefully that improvement keeps going. He, he, you can see the package; it's just not quite fallen into place, but it's it's working. How did you rate Mitch Nevitt's game tonight? Oh, it was a, one of the best <laughs> three minutes I've ever seen. Um, I think he uh, he dropped into second place for the latest sub ever behind uh, VFL vice captain uh, Ham. Um, it's uh, a baffling call. I thought that was going to leave him off, but no. No one's no one's spoken about uh, Oshin Mullen yet. Do you want to give some thoughts on that? Uh, I, on he was actually... I, don't, I don't think he's necessarily done enough to hold his spot personally, but uh, but he's another one that I think you just need to give games to. Um, I don't think I if we get some guys enough, coming back. Mm. Um, as someone who's been very critical of Mark O'Connor over the years, um, mm. I think you can see it working again. Like his defensive game is really good, um, and there's a few moments. There was one crucial moment in the last quarter where he got the handball over the top that led to the goal that pretty much sealed it. Um, I think his game sense is there, but he just doesn't, hasn't played enough um, that he's you know, struggling a bit. So uh, I think keep playing him where you can, but I, when it's fully fit, it's hard to have him in the best 22. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I was, I was so amped up uh, through the preseason coming into round one, just seeing, well, coming into that match sim really, uh, telling everyone that would listen about the best, we've had the best best preseason ever. Um, I went on the um, the Blue Broad show chatting with Terry Degani, talking about how you know we've almost got pretty much everyone's fit and firing, and then within a, six seconds of that match, them against Carlton, Guthrie goes down, and we're starting to see a few more injuries now. And then the Gary Rowan stuff, just you know, that's some of that those things are going on there, and then uh, an abductor injury. For Tom Atkins, who we haven't talked about yet, uh, we don't know much about that just yet, unless um, Chris Scott's been talking about it in the presser. I'm not sure, but um, hopefully he's okay. But uh, what's a, what's an, an adductor normally? Is that a three or four weeker, or do we know? Yeah, well, it depends on whether it's a just a strain or a tear or even a corky. I mean, you look mm. at a bad corky can be long as well. So I don't know, but 
I mean, what would last year they probably would have called a medium term on the injury list. Um, this year they'll Colin probably say the, three to five. Colin weeks. in the van. How many? How many weeks? Uh, Colin says four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. Right in the middle of yeah. three and five. I'll take that. Um, but yeah, no. I, I think I was really worried when he went out because I thought that he, we would need a big game from him. Um, and Parfit just came in and played that same role pretty much perfectly. So yeah, base is covered. Um, coaching masterclass. If we get Cam Guthrie back, thanks uh, for jumping in the chat, Trent. Um, Cam, Gu- God, if Cam Guthrie can have a healthy end of the season, our midfield will contend. It'll take it's a little it's while, already I think. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely. Um, how does Cam fit into that? I'm not talking like we've won 10 games straight. Where it's very, very early in the year. Um, but he'll come back, what, round seven, eight, something something like that, if, if he comes back straight into the ones, which I doubt after having so much time out of this team. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Guthrie play three or four games in the VFL. Yeah. Maybe that's ridiculous. Yeah. At least one Let me know half, if you I think guess. that's stupid. Yeah. So. Sarcastic yeah. Cow. What do you think about this comment from Sarcastic Cow? I worry Clark will be reported again for that tackle. Looked like the same oh. as the one he got noticed for last week. Is that, what, is that one that he drove him into? Uh, yeah, the, I think he folded the knees. Even, even the commentators, other than BT, uh, who was cheerfully barracking bad late all night, but even the commentators seemed to think it was a bit of a, a knee drop rather than the tackle doing okay. it. Oh, well, work on your technique. I don't know. Um, who else haven't we talked about yet? I think we've we talked about Sean Manor, or I know Bianca touched on him. She liked his goal. Yeah, I, I thought Manor's first half was brute, and his second half was a little bit, um, he wanted a bit too much action, biting off more than he could chew. He really burnt Ollie Henry in the goal square late in the third term, um, had a couple of big pings, but uh, there's a lot to like about how he played. Um, Blickstar, as I've been mentioned, who I thought was awesome, especially in the first quarter when Stanley yeah. went off for the second half of the first quarter and he just really took control through the middle. Um, Surprise midfield on paper again. He, he just does such a good job wherever he's needed. Um, Eight yeah, tackles. People have, people have joked about having 22 of him, but it's one of those things where he can play anywhere where needed and, and does a great job. Uh, one he we haven't mentioned is Deconing. Um, no, we haven't talked. Oh, I talked a little bit about him. I thought he was okay, but you, you, you go on. Uh, I think he's looking more like his best. I think his positioning is not as good as it was. Um, I think he and Henry, because they've had such little crossover, um, you know, when, when Henry was out injured was really when DeConing was playing a lot of footy and um, they had a bit of crossover late in that year. Then last year, obviously, DeConing missed a lot instead of Henry. And I think that they're really starting to figure out some some synergy. Um, but he looks a lot better than he did post the, uh, the fracture. And I, I liked a lot of his aerial work and his height's just such an advantage down there. Looks like the chaps are, are, are calling us out on a big error here. We haven't really touched on Tom Stewart, um, oh. probably because everyone else has talked about him. But um, well, let, we've got to talk a little bit about Tom Stewart. So, I did want to. I did want to uh, bring up that um, obviously we mentioned that he tied the intercept mark record, and he should have had it yes. from the soccer he that went twenty it. meters. It wasn't, it wasn't paid. That's it. Should have uh, been eleven. I've... Maybe, maybe. Well, speak to the people that we that you know quite well. Uh, maybe there'll be some <laughs> <it> adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we I might was, be able I was to get that adjusted somehow. After they marked the wrong person, subbed off down. I was going to send a little ping over to Domino <laughs> Barista. Like, oh, who, who put that one down? <laughs> Rochelle off. But um, yeah, I, yep. I can't believe they didn't call fifteen. There was one last night as well in the Collingwood St Kilda game. But the umpire he, they just called not fifteen too early before it carries. Um, uh, a bit of a bit of a shame, but all, all out, still yeah. a phenomenal game. He's such a good footballer. Oh, I don't think. Game. It's, it's hard to find someone who's had a, more accolades and more quality in 150 games. Five-time All-Australian, two-time Best and Fairest, a flag, Players Association Best Young Player Award. Not much more you can do. There isn't, is there? Uh, oh, I just... I don't know. I'm just, I'm just happy with everyone. I, 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 there's clearly some players that were better than others tonight, and Tom Stewart was is going to get... I wouldn't be surprised if he gets all the votes. He'll get the yeah, 10 oh. coaches' votes for sure. Yeah. Um, You'd be you'd be an interesting human being if you didn't give him three votes. The official uh, player ratings I mean, had him seventh best, I think. Yeah, yeah does don't the influence he had on this game. Ask the Adelaide fans who they thought was the best on ground. I'll guarantee you they'll say it was Tom Stewart. Well, um, I had an Adelaide supporter uh, message me straight after the game, basically saying the same thing, um, saying yeah. that for us, obviously voting on Backman each week, he said it has to be the best. It doesn't matter what happens the rest of the weekend. It's hard for someone to top that. No, nah, it's it's pretty pretty impressive what he did. 
Mate, I'll let you go because I've got to get through it. I've got a few board, a few people on the on the call here, but thanks for tuning in. I don't know what time it is over there, but um, oh, I do appreciate you. 8.20 here, so I've got nothing to do oh, tomorrow. Beautiful. I'll be trapped inside. <laughs> You're beautiful. You've got plenty of time to go. <laughs> Have yeah. a good weekend. No worries. Catch you later. Take care. Yeah, I'll get I'll get Jake on. I haven't had a uh, different, different Jake, not Jake from the Chat Chat Cats, but Jake Rip on. Uh, you may recognise this man. How are you going, buddy? Oh, He's up and how about. How are we? How are we? How are we? He's up and about. <laughs> I'm up and about. I could party up all night. We confirmed that before, but that was. I wouldn't say it's amazing. You know, it was a bit rough leading yeah, forward from right. the like the end of the third quarter, sort of to like the end of the game. Very defensive effort. Like, big up Zach Guthrie. Big up Jack Henry. Big up Tom Stewart. But I want to say one name. Mm -hmm. Jai Clark. Like, he's only like a couple of games in. He's got the potential. He's going to get there. Like, you're going to get those supporters that are going to go, oh, he's, he's useless. Like, get him off the field. He's no good. He's played three games. He's going to get there. He'll be up there with the names of Nick Dacos. I was going to ask you. Who, oh, you're, talking, you're going big there. Um, I'm going hopefully, big there. Hopefully he goes a bit harder in a contest than Nick Dacos. Uh, sorry, Nick. Um, is he going to get to the bloke that we often compare him to? Often the media and people like myself have, com- have said he's the 2.0 of a certain Jay Selwood. Is he going to get to those levels or is that just ridiculous? Am I being ridiculous? Uh, Clearly, I'm being, I'm stirring the pot a little bit. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to have to agree with you. I don't think you're being ridiculous there. Really? He won't, he won't. I don't think he'll go, oh, yeah, rising star 2007 Selwood straight away. Give it two, two to three years and you'll be getting, you'll be getting like, yeah, here's our Selwood 2.0. Is he going to get a. Is he capable of getting a rising star nod in um, this season? Like, I think I don't. I don't think he's going to play eighteen games. I think he's probably more around the ten games this year. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think that'll really set him up nicely. Shimmy can say injury free, but I think we'll see a very vastly improved Jai Clark in twenty twenty five with um, the experience that he's going to get. Uh, hopefully, he does keep his spot in the side because I think. You know, a, a premiership side or a contending team just does need that that young bloke that takes that next step and surprises everyone. A bit like, a bit like uh, Joel Selwood 1.0 in 2007, and a bit like uh, Sam DeConning uh, in 2022. Hopefully, hopefully he becomes that player for us, and and he's not that 10 game player which I'm predicting he'll he'll be this year. Uh, but I think good, good points on him. I, I I really think we should just be patient with this guy. Uh, we just need to get some. He needs 50, 40 to fifty games, and he will explode. He's going to be a, a terrier. I'm going, to, I'm going to love it. Like I said, he'll be on day costs level soon. He'll be up there. He'll <laughs> That's be up big. There. If I could, be up there. if That's I could big. bookmark that, if that was a tweet, you got to tweet that out a bit later. <laughs> Have the courage, mate, to tweet that one. Out. That's um, and that's we'll a bring big, that that's up. A big call. <laughs> it's a big call. It's a big call. It's a big call, but I'm sticking to it. I'm sticking to oh, it now. I want to ask you about another player that we haven't talked about or I don't think, unless I've just been ignoring people, but no one's, I don't think anyone's mentioned Tyson Stengel, uh, former All-Australian Tyson Stengel. Uh, uh, got subbed out, subbed out three-quarter time last week. What do you think of his game this week? Let us know in the chat um, if, you know, if you want a bit. Anyone wants to comment on Tyson Stengel's game? Look, whenever he seemed to have the ball in the forward line, he seemed very selfish in my opinion. But that's just, that's mainly most of our forwards, really. But he's looking very sloppy. He's not, we're not seeing the Tyson Stengel that we used to know and love. Yeah, he's not that fancy footwork or the, the finishing yeah. skills. There's one snap around the corner from 20 or 25 metres out, pretty much, or maybe not quite directly in front, but almost pretty good enough. You think he'd gobble that up? Any any forward of his size, um, that's their bread and butter. And I couldn't believe he missed that. Um, mm. Not as bad as that Darcy Fogarty missed from three metres out where he hit the post, but um, but that's that's Stengel's bread and butter. That type of stuff. Um, Paul Chapman would have kicked that every day of the week and twice on Sundays, but uh, that's Paul Chapman. Um, <laughs> 
I love me some Paul Chapman, clearly. Um, yeah. Who else do you like tonight? Oh, it's it's like he had a good first half, but it's just got to be the man that I've got on the batch. He's my new babe. It's Sean Manor. Ooh, good Sean manners. Sean Manor. Oh, the, oh, good manners, good manners. I like that. I like that a lot. Like when he Sean plays well. Manor. When he plays on and when he gets on. Local boy from Werribee. I'm also from Werribee myself. It's why I love him the most. Just when he's on that ball, he's on. He is on. Yep. But another player that did impress me a lot. Oh, I believe he's got him now. Zach Guthrie. I know I mentioned yes. him before. The big baby. And Jake Collin Jasmine. Now, that is a name I thought I'd never say in positive words. Jake Collin Jasmine <laughs> played well. I don't think I'd ever say that. We need a name for those two, don't we? The <laughs> I can't think of one right now, but the two of them holding up the back line at the moment. Could you have predicted that in your wildest dreams? I mean, clearly Tom Stewart. Let's not forget about Tom Stewart for a moment. Yeah, yeah of um, course. But Tom Stewart and, and Zach Guthrie, incredible the, where they've come from. Uh, I, I had Colin Ashney out of our best 23 in the preseason. When we were doing the preseason preview stuff, I, I did not see him there. I, I thought he'd play a lot of footy this year. but uh, And maybe he will drop out at some point. He's, he's starting the year quite well. Um, usually starts the year with an injury or two. But uh, take you got to take your hat off to him. If you're, if you're a Colin Ashney hater, uh, that's fair enough, but you have to admit he's had a great start to the year. And uh, Zach Guthrie, future All Australian. I'm going to put that. I'm tweeting that out later tonight, Jake. I'm tweeting that out later. <laughs> hey, you can bookmark that if you, if you if you tweet that. I'll tweet like Jake Jake Clark. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going there. We're on then. I'm, I'm going there now. <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Mate, I've got, I've got a few calls to get through. I really appreciate yeah, you right. jumping on the chat, though. It's the first no, time, no, I think, for you good, on man. this one. So I'll please come on again. I know we've got the Easter Monday game in a, in a week and a bit, but uh, I'll, I'll be going to that game, I think. It'll probably be a bit of a later show, maybe two or three hours after the show, after the you're game ends, it. and I'll, I'll try and jump Easter on. Monday. But um, hey, say it again. You, you're going to Easter Monday? Definitely. Got to get you on. Oh, definitely, mate. It's Tommy on. Hawkins 350. You if you on. don't – look, yeah. let me just say this. Let me just say this. If you if you call yourself a Geelong supporter and you don't get to Cats versus Hawthorne at the MCG for Tom Hawkins' three hundred and fiftieth game, take yourself out the back. And no, I'm not going to go there. Uh, but you uh, do, do some. You have to get to this game. You have you have to get to this game, people. Um, you're kidding yourself if if you're just going to watch it on the telly. Oh, it's nineteen degrees. It's not quite. It's not quite warm enough for me. You, you're going to have to be like Jack in the chat before on on, on the on the cans before with COVID, um, and even then, put a hazmat suit on or something. I don't know. Just still get there. Um, mm. But I'm I'm coming on your show, mate. Tell us before I let you go. Tell everyone about your show. Oh my show. Oh okay. Um, it is it is a fake interaction. Where is it? Where is it? Me. Um, actually got a new mic. Oh Very nice. Hard. Um, I've got to Need put stickers on this. You got some but, stickers. Um, yep. It is a new fan interaction that I have with a fellow Cheer Squad member, Jack Phipps. We are Ripper and Fipper, obviously. Jack Ripper, Jack Phipps, Ripper and Fipper. Figure that out. That's yep. our thing. We just try and ask every fan, not, well, not every fan, we can't get 350,000 fans, but we try and get as many fans on as we can, ask questions about the footy, even just like little fun questions. What's your favourite Arnott's biscuit? Um, if you had to go on any holiday, where would you get? Like, just, Anything like that, like we're a fun bunch of people that just want to have fun at the footy and that just Love want it. to talk to fans. That yep. is us. And get some, get some Oppo on fans on there as well, especially when they're yeah. losing by 80 points or something like that. Exactly. <laughs> and one thing that I will say. Yes. I saw Paul last week. You did? He went Last off. week? You should have taken a selfie one. with him. I would have given you a four-pack of GT Lager. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> he's Paul. jumped in. I did what? I saw you last week. <laughs> I'm I sorry. Yelled at, I even yelled out your name. You ran away. Oh, mate, me. I was spending <laughs> half an hour trying to get reception just so I could try, try and find Ben to get some beers. Like, it was – I promise I wasn't ignoring you. Yeah, those ones. <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. No, that's fine. <laughs> we're we're coming on. We'll, we'll, be there on, we'll be there on Monday, mate. <laughs> Enjoy yeah, the rest of your easy. night, Jack. All right, cheers, guys. I'll be Take care, buddy.
Go Catters. All right. Now, my boy. The Sim Dog himself. He's been I thought he was in I thought he was in the Philippines at the moment. He's going for a holiday, but let's get him on. The Sim Dog. There he is. Oh, yo. <laughs> What's up? What's up, buddy? Me me and the well, Renegade seventy seven is your hand. We have known each other for how long now? Nearly forty years, thirty years. A long time. We've been friends, my man. Far out, man. What a game. Oh, it's Ooh. a bloody roller coaster. I'll tell you what, I almost threw the TV out the window a few times, but it's still here. <laughs> <laughs> no crack in the screen yet? Not yet, but uh, it's been very close. Before the end of the year, I'm going to need a new TV, that's for sure. <laughs> I reckon there'd be a few Collingwood uh, supporters watching the game that it might need a new tally <laughs> after. Um... <laughs> Uh, Higgins kicked that goal from the car park. <laughs> he doesn't love that. That was fantastic. Oh, it's glorious, isn't it? Oh, mate. Mate, 2 and 0. How far are we going to go on this run? Are we going to be able to put out a DVD like the Saints did those, all those years ago when they won 10 straight? Is that, is that, are we getting the DVD? Are we, are, we, are we talking to the right people yet about putting this DVD out? Is it coming? And is it going to be one of those, uh, what's the special cover that they, the car, I don't know what it is, the, the metal tin it's cover? What, someone else in the chat will know what I'm talking about. Paul's got a whole bunch oh, of these, these kind of things. Yeah. No, we're, we're too good for that. We've won premierships in Field of Heaven, so. That's not happening, but um, I mean, as far as tonight goes, I mean, man, how good was? Look, I love the game from Max Holmes tonight. It was yes. twenty-four touches. Somehow he got um, twenty-four. I don't know how. Yeah, twenty-four. I thought um, yeah. close, close with his fifteen and a goal, underrated tonight. I thought. Yep. Um, a typical close Ollie fifteen Dempsey. possession game. Yeah. <laughs> fifteen Ollie possessions. Dempsey. Ollie didn't hit the scoreboard tonight. Ollie Dempsey, no. sixteen touches. No. Well, that was all right. Yep. It, yep. He, it, I think it goes to show that he doesn't need to be a goal kicker to be effective no. for us. Um, Sean Manor, I, I like what he brings. I mean, he kicked one goal two tonight, thirteen touches. Uh, he, he he's just got the know how. He, he's one of those guys that's just a baller, you know. Yeah, yeah. Who, Need to get a whole lot of touches, and he's going to have a huge effect for us. So, I like what he bought. I thought even down back to that two, 19 touches was pretty solid tonight. Um, danger before he got injured. Hopefully, that's not a long term thing. Hopefully he's rubbing his hammy at the end there, but who knows? Uh, yeah, 23 touches for danger tonight, and hopefully, he's not going to miss some time. If he does, yeah, hopefully, it's uh, just one of those things. One or two. Danger was he, danger was going to be arrested at times this year anyway. So yeah, yeah. you want him, you want him playing against the Hawks, but whatever, it's not meant to be. Yeah, I mean, but the king tonight, I thought twenty six touches, three goals from Brian Myers was <laughs> tremendous, even. That's tremendous, <laughs> that's tremendous. <laughs> the last man, Tommy, Tommy Stewart, twenty eight touches. Just beautiful. What he does is just, uh, oh, Tommy. I, I reckon there'd be people watching this video or in the chat just getting absolutely, their blood was boiling because we haven't talked about Tommy Stewart enough. Um, what more can you say about the bloke, though? He's an absolute star. He's a gun. Um, and I, the thing I liked probably the most about it tonight was um, just him at the end and he's like, no, nah, no, what the, didn't want the chair off. Didn't He was trying to tell Danger and Tui not to give him the chair off, but uh, they did it anyway. And then seeing his little boy in the crowd, uh, his little son in the crowd, um, you know, waving at his dad, that was, that was a good moment. I like that. As a father myself, I I like that yeah. little stuff. Um, I remember when he was – when those kids were a little bit littler and uh, he was celebrating with them on grand final day. That was that was nice. Um, all those many moons ago now. Maybe shades of Matthew Scarlett there, like, hey, I don't want yeah. too much. I don't want too I'm much uh, line line. I'll just go about do my job. And uh, yeah, he's a tremendous. My like, twenty-eight possessions, uh, fantastic. And uh, that's a Tommy Stewart we know, Tommy Stewart we love, and hopefully there's plenty more games to come for him. Um, who else was fantastic? Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Uh, can I ask you before you go on to someone else? Um, 
because you're 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 a betting man. We know this. Um, who who have you got money on to chair off Tom Hawkins next weekend? Who will it be? Ooh, Jezza will be there for sure. No, it's Jezza and Jezza and Danger. Put the Jezza money in on Danger. That. Yep. I'm gonna I'm well, gonna disagree vehemently. Oh. Uh, no, not vehemently, but I'm gonna say it'll be Blitzarves. Um, mm-hmm. and definitely won't be um, Tyson Stengel, that's for sure. Um, smallest bloke in the AFL almost. Uh, oh, God. Probably Tom Stewart. I don't know. Maybe Tom Stewart, yeah. Blitz Arbs and Tom Stewart. The defenders, I don't know. Let us know in the chat. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? Maybe maybe they'll get Joel Selwood out of the crowd. Um, thank you, Paul. Bring you in. Sorry, who else? Who you were going to say? Who else did you want to talk about? Um, quietly, Zach Tui was pretty good tonight. I thought. Okay. Nineteen touches. I thought it, 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 he didn't do anything flashy. I thought he was pretty solid. No, no, uh, no harm for um, good old Zach. I thought he was pretty good. And Max Holmes, twenty-four touches was pretty good, also. 12 kicks, 12 handballs, which was the interesting stat for me with Max Holmes that seems like the opposition did their homework on him and, and didn't maybe let him get out into space as much. Um, he he was a lot more damaging last week against St Kilda. Uh, he had a lot more room and was running 15 metres and kicking at 55. Um, but he just seemed, yeah, a lot more handballs in traffic, a different type of um, way, but the fact that he just fought his way through that and had 24 touches for me, that's like that's worth about 33 to me, just considering the way Adelaide played him tonight. I'd have to look at the game again, but I was really impressed there. Five clearances as well, so um, yeah. really, really good game from from Holmesy, big, big Holmesy. Yeah, and just um, what do you think of Brandon Parfit with his 20 touches as a late replacement? Um, I I shat my pants when I saw that news. Literally, I had to go put on a new pair of underpants. Um, but credit where credit's due, mate. Um, Parfit was fantastic tonight. He wasn't. He wasn't. Um, didn't. He's not going to get three Brownlow votes. Um, but considering where he's come from, um, it's just the little things that he did that really mattered. Um, and just the ferocity around the tackle, the inside. Um, he ne- he's never going to make great decisions. Um, but he was just he was just heart and soul tonight, and that's what I loved about his game. Um, you know, he's not he's not the smartest. He's not, he's got the best footy IQ ever, I don't think. Um, but I just yeah. love the way he went about it tonight, and I, ho- I hope he gets another game next week. I don't think it's necessarily guaranteed, um, but yeah, I hope he, I hope he gets a game next week. I hope Mitch never gets more than one or two minutes as well. Yeah, that's it. I prefer him, probably prefer Mitch more so than Parfit. I mean, Parfit. I mean. Uh, I think Scotty has a little bit of a love affair with Parfit. I, I don't really see the big picture with him. Um, he's one of those guys who's like, eh, thereabouts, you know. Um, he's a depth player. Prefer, yeah, he's one of those guys who, in emergency, one of those break glass, bring in Brandon Parfit guys. But um, uh, uh, I'm not sure. I think Mitch Never has a big future with us. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I'm still torn with uh, Parfit, unfortunately. Be honest with everyone watching. Is, is your, here's your opportunity, Sim Dog. Who's your who's your mortal enemy? Well, so we for people that well we 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 shouldn't do this, but we do. We we have a we have a player that that just rubs us the wrong way for whatever reason. Um, who is it for you at the moment at the Geelong Football Club? Doesn't mean you hate them. It just means um, that. Yeah, they of of all the listed players, they really just do your head in. Look, it's always for the last few years have been um, Todd Jasney, but he's started the season fantastically. I, I, Everyone's I saying that. Yeah, I can't jump on him. He's been top ten in the Kaji so far, I'd say. Yeah, absolutely. He's been yep. fantastic. I can't fault him at all. Um, so yep. maybe if I have a mortal. Would it be uh, Mark O'Connor? Maybe. <laughs> I'm just looking in the chat. King King Shorty, come on, Colin, hurry up, bring it up. King Shorty, um, he's talking about 
Reese Stanley. I think he, there's probably a few. Mark O'Connor. Um, Ooh, and I'm sure these guys are really nice. So <laughs> they just on the footy field, they just do my head in. Uh, thank you, Colin. Uh, Reese Stanley oh, is yeah. my one. Yeah, Parfit's still only 25. What the hell? That was Parfit only 25. After Reese Stanley, who are we going to bring in as a ruck? Toby Conway. Or uh, if they want to get yeah. some games out of this fella, um, Shannon Neal. But he's not yeah. – I think he's more of a oh, forward yeah. than a ruck. But yeah, he's a switch between forward and ruck. Oh, Jesus, tough, isn't it? If That's our biggest weakness, the ruck. I mean, Stanley oh, holds, he holds his own, but he's not mm, – yeah, do you know right. what I reckon they do uh, again for the Hawthorne game? They, they bring in a thug. They bring in an absolute hardcore thug that's just gonna yeah. that's gonna sharpen his elbows before the game. Not Tommy Hawkins. He's, he's not a thug. Um, but an ab- bring in an absolute thug and and starve him and whip him uh, in the days before the game. <laughs> just let him loose. Open the cage door and let him go nuts on some Hawthorne players. On Easter Ooh, Monday, I would love that. Yes, I love, love it. that too. That's fantastic. Who was the bloke? Who was the John bloke that cleaned up Hodgie all those years ago with an elbow and then co- copped a couple of weeks for that in the in an Easter Monday game? I can't remember. He didn't last long on the list, but I took my hat off to him anyway. Um, anyway, I'm not sure. Got I remember his name, mate. I better keep going. Thanks for joining us in the chat. Um, you get you on again. Enjoy your trip to uh, the Philippines. Take some photos. Find, find a bar or two. I'm sure you will. Uh, and we'll uh, hopefully. Are you there? Are you there for the Easter Monday game? Is that where you'll be? I'll be there for the next three games. So yeah. Oh wow. Okay. All right. We'll have to do. You'll yeah. definitely have to do a cross while you're over there. Um, just to, I'll be yep. we'll, we'll get. We'll get. We'll get some people on that don't know a thing about AFL football and we'll pass the phone to them and we'll talk to them about what they thought of the game as well. Perfect. <laughs> good on you, mate. Have a good night. All right, mate. You too. All right, Ethan, you've been waiting very patiently and I can see you there too, Kyrie. I will get to you before we finish up. Ethan, how you going, buddy? I'm great. It is 5.45 in the morning. <laughs> you are keen. And that's a game we do not win last year. Uh, nope. We give up the lead start of the third quarter and never get it back. Way to tough out, just a stellar win. You know, I thought it was going to be a tough one to begin with. Then you find out a couple days ago, no Brune. Find out, what, a little over an hour to game time tonight, no Atkins, no Duncan. Uh, congrats to Duncan and his family, by the way. But thought this was going to be tough, and they just gutted it out. You know, the model is do just enough in the midfield because you know we're going to be pretty good in both 50s. And, man, Tom Stewart. Tom Stewart, wow. I am so fortunate to be a fan at a time when we have him, because he's the only other player in the entire competition that could be compared to him as a defender is Sam Taylor, and it's a different skill. You know, Taylor, one-on-one, sure, but what Hawkins does I mean, what Stewart does roaming, what he does with his field kicks, what he does with his handballs, just setting attacks off the other way. It's like you take the best of Sam Taylor and the best of what Luke Ryan did last week, directing traffic for Frio, and you put them into one. And when I saw that he came out of the gates like he did tonight, I thought, man, we might really have a shot here. We might, you know, get behind him in a milestone game. That's just... That just seems to be the way it works, you know? Like, we had the misfortune of lining up on a Toby Green milestone game last year. So it was nice to have one line up like that. I mean, That's they tried to move on him. And uh, Hawkins, I mean, sorry, uh, Stewart, Luke Pedler's now his son. And I think Hawkins has a new son, too, in Jordan. <laughs> just, uh, Tommy Hawkins, yes. I think I think every time the word Tommy Hawkins gets mentioned, um, Colin on the buttons is um, playing that little grab from. Uh, I'm just I'm just super proud of this one because again we do not win oh. this game last year. No, we uh, don't. Grian was excellent. Scores three, has an assist or two himself. I think they had him officially for what? Oh, two assists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, two assists. One to Hawkins, yep. and I forget I think, which other. Uh, Close, he had uh, three assists. 
And I thought I think he was, did a good yeah. job just creating action and yep. credit to Parfit for coming in on such short notice and playing well and credit to Mullen. I mean, I know it wasn't his best game, but he kind of did what like a backup quarterback is supposed to do in football, like American football or what a backup catcher is supposed to do in baseball or like a backup point guard in basketball, like just keep things moving and don't mess it up. And I thought we'd be at a disadvantage physically without Atkins and guys took it on and tackled. And other than like one sequence yeah. in the second quarter, Parfit really embraced it physically. And he, they've got him with 10 tackles as of now. And uh, Mark O'Connor. Wow. Like most underappreciated guy. I mean, he was playing a wing role last week. He gets into the middle tonight and gets dirty. I, I'd consider giving oh. him the one vote. I think, I think, Stewart for three and Myers for two is obvious. Wow, but you can okay. argue a whole bunch of guys for that one vote, and I think O'Connor should oh. be in that mix. He's, one votes are always the hardest, aren't they? It's just because uh, you could, yeah, you could raffle it with four or five players. I think. I just. I want to. I, I want to bring you back. O'Connor. I want to bring you back to a comment you said before about Tom Atkins being out and everybody else stepping up in terms of the tackling game. It was really noticeable the tackling game that Geelong brought tonight. And I, that was my biggest fear going into this, that, oh, my God, you can almost count on Tom Atkins for 10 tackles a game. We're going to be in trouble. Uh, but it was almost the opposite effect. Everyone stood up. It reminded me, well, it wasn't quite as as crazy. There was a game, takes me back a while ago now, Paul might remember this one, but um, a game against the Bulldogs at GMHBA HBA or Cadenia Park, maybe 10 years ago now. Um, Geelong was insipid the week prior. Absolutely insipid, uncompetitive, uh, and they were getting crap, cop and crap in the media uh, about how they're just not hard, they don't tackle, blah 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 blah. Mitch Duncan comes out and has seventeen tackles, and I think we break all kinds <laughs> of records for tackles um, back then. It was just insane, and it just reminded me a lot like that. The, the whole team effort, um, Adelaide just couldn't, didn't have any oxygen. It was in, it was incredible, um, and that was what and I loved about. I think Rory Laird. Uh, yeah, when I mean, Laird had seven, Dawson led all players with twelve. But I don't think Dawson did anything transformative. No, nah. we did a really good job on him. Did a great job on Miller outside of the first quarter. We we neutralized most of their strengths. I was worried. Like this is a game last year. Burgess ends up with like at least three or four goals instead of the two. I mean, who was even Adelaide's best? Because we came up with a new award, you know, the best player on the losing team each week. I like that award. Polished turd. I, I came up with it after Harris Andrews, like, wasn't going to get any Brownlow votes, but played well against Frio last week. Was it Rochelle? Was it Crouch? I don't know. I Riley O'Brien for me. Yeah, Riley O'Brien, 100%. O'Brien, O'Brien yeah, he was amazing. the best of Stanley, but I thought it's a tough matchup for Stanley, just – you know, O'Brien's beefy. Stanley's a little more wiry. It's like yeah. the same sort of matchup. Like, I would totally go with Conway over Stanley against like a Jared Witts if we get to yes. that point. Yep. You know, if Witts is healthy, you know, he's out this week. But I'm not that critical of Stanley. I didn't think he was that bad. He he got out muscled, but he made his impact. And you know, when you have both him and Blitzobs, it's going to work out in some capacity. And just we're so fortunate to have Mark Blitzobs. The only thing I'll say about Mark Blitzarves, and people that watch me on the show know I love Mark Blitzarves, but goodness me, he just gave a handball to <laughs> Riley O'Brien in that last yes, quarter. Yes, and he dropped yeah, have, one more. Have point. it, have it, kick a goal. I don't care. Um, we're just toying with you anyway. <laughs> I know that he was did just drop a mistake, one but, mark later too, but yeah, it was, that was like, oh my god, that's just that happens in games. Um, a lot of guys there. just did enough. You know, Jack Henry gets tasked with Walker and. Mm -hmm. He didn't totally shut him down, but he did enough. Yep. You know, that's like the sort of guy when you play someone like Port, you can trust on Charlie Dix, and it's like, no, you're not going to make him a non-factor, but you're going to make him work for it. And it meant that we didn't have to send any other guys in there, which meant everyone else could stick with their assignments. DeConing struggled early, got better as the game went on. Cole Jashney, I loved him last week, loved what he did again this week. I was yep. I was so tough on him last year, and he's been great. Oh, he's been he's been terrific this year, and I hope he's I hope he doesn't listen to shows or what reads too much um, articles about himself. Um, I just I don't want him to 
uh, he's just done everything he needs to do, and I just don't want him to. I don't want to change anything. Just keep playing the way you're playing. I just do want to mention uh, Riley O'Brien had 48 hit outs. 48 yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, it's a couple away from 50 if I have done my maths right. Um, yeah, no, incredible. Um, I think they updated it to 47, and then we had, we had what? Stanley 18, Blitzov's 15, but we did a good job on clearances still for what it's worth. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't really looked at team stats too much yet. Uh, I thought Adelaide, it's frustrating when we, we when opposition teams try and um, play the possession game um, because they're trying to find a way through our defense. And so we go through often long stretches where we, we can't get our hands on the ball because they're playing this very deliberate, they're not taking the game on, they're not taking the risks through the middle. They're trying to find their way through this this mesh or this or this net or whatever they're calling it, um, which means that they're probably going to get a bit more of the ball and there'll be times where we just can't get our hands on it. And there'll, be, there'll also be times where they where it'll be effective and they'll cut through. But for the most part, it generally results in a in turnover because it, turnover because it frustrates oppositions and they, well, we did they a end good up job sort of just pressure. They blaze away. There were, again, there were sequences in this game that I thought we could have broken. And largely, we did not do that. It's just no. there was a level of resolve and toughness that I think last year's team just lacked. And I don't know how much of that is Dangerfield having a second year as captain, how much of that is, you know, the whole team coming together, how much of that is coaching. But I was very you know, happy to see it. Do you know what we haven't talked about on the show tonight? I think Dangerfield had stars in his eyes again. He thought he was going to do it all over again. He's going to kick the match winner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm going to do this two weeks in a row. Uh, <laughs> and I think he just, yeah, shanked it, didn't he? Kicked it out in the yeah, floor we were, or something like that. We had a couple <laughs> other way worse shanks. Uh, oh, yeah, grind. Yeah, the only uh, thing he did wrong all night. Yeah, he was great. Cameron had a couple. You know, sure. We could have buried them a little earlier. Yep. Because I always I always save the the gif of Jake Rippon from the it was the game yep. against the Bees. I forget if it was last year or the year before. Yep. But that's no, good that one. I was all it's, set to put that out. And we ended up, you know, ended up having to save it until who was it who got the late goal to really bury? Was it Grian's third or was it Yeah, it was Grian's uh, third that yeah. really put it yeah. to bad. I mean it was we had bled out enough clock at that point. Thanks in part to uh, Fogarty hitting the post. That was that was nice. That was a nice gift. That helped. Um, their forwards yeah. missed a few that they usually take care of, but their forward line's good. That's a good team. Yeah. I think we were lucky to keep Rankin quiet. I, I love that yeah. only after they miss all these easy shots, after the game's put away, you know, he goes and hits a really tough goal from the boundary that you know, might be yeah. one of the goal of the week nominees. Yeah, game over, though. It doesn't mean anything. It's junk time goal. Yeah, I uh, love that it running. happened then instead of when it mattered. You wouldn't see that's, me kicking that goal. That's for sure. Um, no, he, when it's going to matter, big picture, because that's a team that's going to be in the finals mix. Adelaide, this year, do you think? I think so. Look, they were right there last year. I know they would be hard from 0 2, though. Mm. With injuries and with due day leaving, but no, I like what they have. Who have they I think got next week? Uh, let me check. Let's see. I would assume they go on the road because they'll obviously be at home for gather round. Colin on the buttons, if you if you're still there, just pull it up on the screen for uh, us. Here, I got get... it. Pulling it up on my phone right now. They go at ooh at Frio. That'll be right after, right after like the Good Friday North Carlton game. That'll be fun. I like watching Frio. That'll be great. And then for gather round, they have the D's to kick off the round. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll find out a little bit about him. Um, they started the going to last year. I'd like to think we might have caught him at the right time because we could never catch anyone at the right time last year. No. It's just nah, we, you know, yeah. we got to catch a few breaks. Nothing went we, right for us last year. Things are we starting to go right good. for us this year, but um, I don't know. If we get another in, couple of injuries next week as well, um, it's going to start getting pretty pretty hard, especially when you're yes. getting these four, these, can we, when we say medium term injuries. Uh, I think the Tom Atkins one sounds like it could be medium term. Um, what's yeah, medium that's those? concerning. Did that, or do we know if that happened during training or when that happened? 
I don't know, were they having a wrestling match on the aeroplane or something? I don't know. Um, well, what, you know who's going to be? Hopefully it wasn't the same Callum Mills got hurt. i tell you who will be absolutely cherry ripe, ready to go, running on air next week against Hawthorne. Mitch Duncan. Uh, he's, oh, he, yeah. Tommy Hawkins as well. Uh, but Mitch Duncan um, had a nice little rest. Old man Duncan probably won't have much sleep. But uh, he's, he's – Oh, yeah. But be, guys who come in off of having a kid, it's just like – just like baseball, your first game back from paternity leave, you hit a home run. That's the rule. So, yeah, I expect so Mitch to be ready. Duncan, 30 touches, three goals. Is that is that what we're saying? Sure. Cool. Let's go with it. That's, that's, just, that's the way I'm reading it. You know what's nice is that because we lost to the Hawks just a couple years ago, I well, think we won't, we won't take this lightly. No. Even with said, the injuries they have, we will not take them lightly. I mean, I wouldn't take any team with Newcomb lightly. But, yeah, I mean, this is a big win, big picture. It sets us up. I think we've got a good shot at, you know, going four and one. Or, I mean, I'm, I think it's too early to talk about. But, look, these first five games all of a sudden look a lot more friendly because we talked last week, like, round six through 11. That six-game stretch is nasty. You know, so, I think we get. I think we go to the mid-season draft because we're playing Hawthorne round seventeen as well. I think we draft. Uh, we get Barry Hall to come out of retirement for the mid-season draft, uh, and we we play him in the, the Cats versus Hawks game round seventeen. He gets a run uh, and just uh, cuts through a few Hawks players. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm just, like I'm just happy about this one because again, we don't show this sort of toughness and win this sort of game last no. year. I think Jake or the chaps were saying in the comments before it's um, we're finding different ways to win, uh, which is great. That's what good teams more do. Confidence. I don't know what our brand is yet. I don't know what that is just yet. It's too early. And apologies for saying brand, but um, I don't. I don't know what our DNA is just yet. Uh, but hopefully we'll figure it out if we keep winning. Um, yeah. The one nice thing I'd say that you know that was definitely part of our identity in 2022. You know, we always had that rock solid premiership defense, but it was, you know, do enough in the midfield and dominate both fifties. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. look, I was if if you identify, you know, there is a difference between a premiership defense and good defense. I think, you know, DeConing could still have a little way to go, or Henry could go from good to excellent, but I we showed some of those elements. I'm not I'm not ruling anything out. I'm not going to anoint us as anything. I mean, it's two games, but big picture, this is a big one. This is this is huge in the scheme of things. Um, I, Especially yeah, after I, how bad we were on the road last year. Yeah, to win these we games. and we've got, a, we've got a lot of interstate games this year. So um, I think it's – I checked. It's five just like last year plus the gather round if you want to count mm. that. Well, the difference is gather round is against an actual team this year. It's another Victorian team we play, so it should be fine. But yeah, the difference uh, is, I mean, last year it was a free win. Yeah, not that, not that I don't like playing against a team that wastes talent like the Dogs because they have talent. They just waste it. But hmm. I mean, we go to the Gabba, we go to Sydney, we got Frio at their place, we go to Darwin. So I'm just, I'm happy with this one. I'm very happy with this because this is not a game last year's team wins, and I'll hammer that home again and again. And just throughout the rest of the round, this will make me happy while I watch these other games. And uh, I know we got what six more games this round because a couple teams have a bye. But when they get to the that's, Golden Fist, that's how right. can you not give three right. votes to Stewart? Stewart, three votes. Give him Best all the defender. votes. He was unbelievable like i've seen him play some great games this was one of his absolute best in all facets and didn't play a minute in the midfield uh that was been all the talk all preseason that he's going to be the next midfielder he's a good defender let's just keep him as a defender i, mean, I think that's the way to go the only way that could have happened see i had thought before we knew duncan was going to be out tonight that the lineup change for brune would have been like maybe bring in views and then push duncan forward a line yeah. But I'm I, we got this, we got Bose coming back. I think we've got options right now. And uh you talked about Sean Mana a little earlier. You know, there were there was one play 
that really frustrated me where he tried to take on like four guys at once. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh, but he also just the quickness, the ability to get kicks and handballs off. He makes things happen. Jai Clark did the same thing. He he tried to take on about four Adelaide players at once. Yeah. <laughs> You're not Patrick Dangerfield. Um, I'm not going to hate know, on Jai's performance. No, not He's at all. Not not, I, I say that lightheartedly. I don't mean to pick on the guy, yeah. but it's three games in. You've like, you got to figure out what's what works for you, and you don't know that three games in. So yeah. He's uh, got work to do still, but learning on the fly and learning through a win like this, I think, is you know, what's the best experience you can get. I think so. All right, mate. One more comment before I let you go and jump and finish off with Kyrie in the chat. What do I want to ask you about here? Uh, I want to. Oh, I want to ask you something a little bit different. I, I jokingly made some comments before about Mitch Nevitt only playing um, a minute, but more more serious question: Are we going to see Mitch Nevitt much in the next um, in the first half of this year? Do you think uh, will I he think get he's some a opportunities? Bit down the depth chart. Mm. You know, where I mean, he was forced in by injuries. Maybe, maybe a game against like North or somebody where we're able to manage guys, he gets thrown in there. But I don't think we'll see a ton of him unless, you know, someone like Dempsey ends up struggling. I thought, I know his numbers weren't great tonight, but I thought Dempsey made the most of his touches and kind of I locked him. made stuff happen along the outside. Yeah. Was he great? No, but he was serviceable, and sometimes that's all you need. You don't have to be transformative. You just got to do enough. And I think there were a lot of guys tonight that just did enough. And before you go, I hope everyone looks. This, by the way, is Grian. Hi, Grian. Or Grian Harambe. Hello. Go Cats. I wanted to get him on last week. But you couldn't find him. No, or didn't want to. Yeah. I'm surprised that just hearing someone else's voice doesn't terrify him because he's really skittish, but I'm glad he's uh-huh. here. Well, he knows and I've got two cats. At, I've got two cats at home, so he... And now he's got his hand can... on my nose. But his namesake played a terrific game tonight. And I was just... It was a proud dad moment, like seeing you know, this player that I've been following since... I mean, he was one of the first players I discovered watching the sport to have such a good game and get, you know, a post-game interview on a nationally broadcast game. Unfortunately, the American broadcast is cut away by that point, but watch yeah. AFL still had it. I'm just, it's so it's cool to see him actually panning out like this. Cause you know, 2021, 22, there were, there was a lot of doubt. No, oh, there was, there was heaps of doubt on that, on him. Um, and I'm glad he's turned it around. Thanks to Ed Paul James will claim it. Um, he will claim that he got him on behind the play and that turned his career around. I don't have Dan straight that way. <laughs> Keep Paul. There was also a number thirty-two, very clearly displayed in the cheer squad that someone was wearing. That made me happy. <laughs> have a great weekend. Enjoy your well. It's breakfast time nearly over there for you. Yeah. Hopefully, um, great way to start the weekend. Oh, it's great. It's nothing worse than when you have a loss on a on a Friday night, but uh, or a Friday morning for you, as it might be. Uh, yeah. Thanks for coming on the chat. Well, hopefully we'll see you on uh, in well Monday in about a week and a half's time. Hopefully, I don't know what time that is over there for you. Maybe that's yeah, a horrible it will be time. Like, whenever you get on, probably one to two a.m. next Monday because the game is like I think a little after time. nine p.m. Sunday or ten p.m. Sunday. I'm sleepy in the following day. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe you might have Let's to. Let's go get them. Let's keep this rolling. Go cats. Go cats. Thanks, mate. Take care. All right, he's been very patient, and I can't wait to hear from him because he's actually been at the game tonight. Uh, I think he has, unless something happened, but I'll get him on. Kyrie, <laughs> thank you. You're here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Tell me about I, the game. I was I was at the game, in fact, Ben. Um, yeah, I just got back um, half an hour ago, and, uh, yeah, ha- how good. Start the season oh. 2-0 against and beat the Crows at the Adelaide Oval. It doesn't get better than that, mate. Can I ask you, and I'm assuming you were sitting behind the goals. I'm assuming that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might have even spotted you at one point. But what? how did you react and how did everyone around you react when Darcy Fogarty slammed it into the post? Oh, I just, my, I was <laughs> like this, like Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. My, my uncle next to me, he's a Crow supporter. He couldn't believe it either. Um, yeah. It was just it was just dead silent. 
light, all of the Adelaide Oval, there was a pin drop. <laughs> that's yeah. how that's how crazy it was. He was having a great game too. Um, he was for- like, for, yeah, like Tex. Tex was. Uh, I know this is a Geelong show, but Tex was having an absolute stinker. But Darcy Fogarty, he was. He didn't miss other than the poster that he had. But yeah. Um, but from from the yeah the crows were disappointing. I thought because like what Ethan said earlier, it's one of those games where it's absolutely hard to beat. And honestly, I, I didn't expect us to, uh, to win this game. I tipped the crows. Um, did you? But yeah, I, I had to go head over heart for this one. I want Geelong to win, of course. But of course, in plenty plenty of experiences, I've been to some Adelaide and uh, Port games. You know, we tend to start well, then the opposite. No, don't stuff, tell me you've but... been waiting. Oh, no, we nearly lost you there. Oh, no. So, um, well, it just froze what... for a bit. Uh, well, what I'm, say- what I'm saying is, um, yeah, um, some 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 previous games that I've been to, um, there's just some patches that we just looked out of it. And, and Geelong wasn't that. We were always in it. Um, the pressure was there. And we were very accurate in goal as well, especially in the first half. And, and uh, yeah, just kudos, kudos to the boys. Um, if this was something we needed to work on this year, this was uh, interstate games, and we've got the first one of the year in the bank, and we're two and zero, and it's a great start to the year. Put the lid off. What do you think of uh, Tommy Hawkins's game? Oh, uh, Hawk, Hawkins, was, Hawkins was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I literally just asked you that just to see if um, Colin was still on the on the job um, in the back room in the van. Sorry, I should say. No, he played well, eh? Four goals straight. Yeah, um, no, he was brilliant, yeah. Um, and I think this may have been mentioned in the show as well, but I really like Brandon Parfitt's performance. Uh, 20 yeah. disposals, 10 yeah. tackles. Um, you know, if he keeps if he, if he he keeps putting performances uh, like that, I just, just why not? I mean, there was just some instances, like we saw the old Brandon Parfit, the hard tackling machine that he was. Um, it was really great to see. Um, and, you know, I, I hope he gets an opportunity next week against the Hawks. I think it'd be very unlucky for him to um, get dropped. Um, but, yeah, I, I thought he was yeah. really good. Do you think – I'm going I'm, to I'm, – it's getting late and we're asking all the dumb questions uh, after midnight – is there a chance Tom Hawkins breaks Fred Fanning's record, kicks nineteen goals, <laughs> and 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 reaches the eight hundred goal milestone against the Hawks? Uh, oh, you know, well, if he if he wasn't if he wasn't selfless over the years, then he certainly would have broken that by now. Yeah, yeah. I think he's got no. Sorry, he's got a. He kicks four tonight, so he's he needs fifteen goals. So yeah, it's yeah. probably Ablett. Uh, Tommy Hawkins will need an Ablett esque type performance. Mate, if we if we played Essendon next week, then uh, Essendon every week, then that's that's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Well, we should just bring forward the country game. Well, can't we? I know we have double up games, but can't we have triple up games just so we can play Essendon? I don't know who our who our bunny side is at the moment. I can't remember. It seems like everyone's eventually caught up to us, but it's probably the Bulldogs or something like that. It's it's definitely yeah. um definitely St Kilda. Can we play St Kilda at Kinnear Park every week? That'd be great. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna get to a game in Victoria this year? Do you think? No, I am. Um, I, I think I may mention it like one of the other chats, but I'm gonna go to the um, Richmond game in um, June at GMHBA. Um, Sweet. Yeah, it's like yeah, just trying to get time off work and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm tr- trying trying to get trying to get to more. Uh, but yeah, no, I'll be I'll be there. Definitely gonna be there, mate. You- You'll probably go. I'm assuming you'll be trying to get. If you haven't already got a ticket, you'll be trying to get to the gather round game against the doggies. Was that two weeks oh, time, roughly? I think. Uh, yeah, it's two weeks. No, I I, I got no, I, secure, I secured tickets uh, last year. Great. Managed to beat the Swifty craze. So no, I'll be nice. there, mate. Um, if there's yeah, if there's resales, just go for it, man. No, I'd lo- love for you to be there. All the hoops crew. I don't know if anyone's going from from the crew. Um, I don't. I can't. Some of the. I know some of the Twitter folk are, but uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's about it. yeah but oh, I um, think Danders might might be going along. I could. I might have misheard that, but um, but yeah, definitely a few others on Twitter are, are heading down. It seems to be a bit of a, a bit of a road road trip type thing. Uh, I was really hoping to <laughs> yeah. do it. I was, I was thinking if I can get 
just a cheap place outside of town or whatever and just drive up same that day, drive back the next day or whatever, um, you know, just do it as cheap as I can. But I couldn't get a ticket or left it too late or whatever it was. But um, unfortunately, I'll be I'll be watching it from, from home um, and hoping we'll get you on afterwards to tell us all about it and hopefully a couple <laughs> of other people. From their from yeah. their three star hotel rooms, uh, motel rooms, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, party party at Kyrie's place, everyone. Uh, after yeah, the game, everyone, you're all, all welcome. All welcome. Oh well, we'll have to hire at a. Well, I won't be there, but um, we should we should think about getting a function place and uh, getting everyone, all the Geelong Twitter people, after the game to catch up because there'll be enough of them, as you said. There's a, there's a few going, so um, we'll we'll yeah. definitely try and do something in Geelong. Uh, some kind of um, pre-game or post-game catch-up uh, for the for the Twitter family or Instagram family. Nearly, we've nearly got a. Th- we're just about ticked over a thousand on Insta. Um, yeah, if anyone yeah. anyone's watching this is not following the Hoops crew on Instagram, <laughs> give us a follow on Instagram because that'll that'll help us get over a thousand there. So that'll be nice. It all just uh, inflates the ego just a little bit more. Um, but yeah, right. No, look, I really appreciate you hanging on so long, mate. I knew I, I was planning to get you on at the very end anyway because oh, I knew you were yeah. coming home from the game and all that. But, uh, yeah, I didn't want you to miss out. No, no worries. And, th- and thanks for keeping up as well, Ben. We pre- appreciate it, mate. Um, oh, I know it's midnight it's like, over there too, so, yeah. 12.14 at the moment on, on my <laughs> on my PC screen. Uh Mate, who's how, where's Geelong going to finish now? We're two and zero. I don't know. I don't know what your preseason predictions were, but do Ooh. you see Geelong finishing top four now, or is it still too early for you to make a call on that? I think um, it's just all down to like the rest of the rest of our games at the moment. I think well, def, definitely definitely make finals. Uh, I reckon we're still probably outside, just outside of the top four, fifth and six. But you never know. You just got to take it one week at a time and stuff. And and th- and this game showed that uh, you know we don't have the full full strength of uh, cattle, but you know anything's possible. You just got to take it one week at a time. And I think uh, uh, the, the next game against the Hawks, um, I think as uh, Ethan said, or some of the other guys, they won't take them lightly. Um, yeah, let's just uh, let's just belt the crap out of them as well. So let's let's just. Bring in a thug. I don't care who. You, I don't care if you have to drop Jeremy Cameron. Bring in someone that just wants to throw elbows. Um, that'll be great because um, I do not like the Hawks. Uh, no, I, no I, 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 I respect them. Um, even, even though they and, and won, won many games last year, but I don't want to go two and zero and then drop a game to Hawthorne. Uh, it'll that'll be, yeah, that'll feel that'll feel bad if that happens. But um, yeah, nah, look, hopefully we go go well again. Um, yeah, we we need to. I th- I'm I'm thinking the cats are probably looking more likely for finishing top four now than what they were at the start of the year. Um, yeah. Just getting that win in Adelaide can make a big big difference. Look, we will drop Absolutely. a game that we're we'll, we'll drop a game that we should not have dropped. It's going to happen at some point in time. Oh, for sure. Like yeah, GWS probably at GMHBA most likely. Uh, well. They're going really well at the moment. I'm so going to slash the tires of their bus. Oh, I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm. I am going to set off alarms at the at the Novotel or whatever it's called, the Sheraton. I don't know what it's called in Geelong these days. The Holiday Inn, <laughs> wherever they're staying. Tell you what, I am going to talk to my ambulance buddies, and we're just going to be doing laps around there with the sirens blaring. There'll be all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to get. We need to win that game. That game will be season defining if we can beat GWS, Definitely. who I think. We'll be the best team in the home and away season if we can beat them. We're well on our way. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, absolutely, mate. Thank you again for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, I think it's three. It's a hat trick for you. Three weeks in a row. So I'm pretty sure it has been anyway. So let's make it four, buddy. Let's make it four in a row. You take care of yourself. No worries. Hopefully. Oh, what are we showing here, Colin? I don't know what that is. I'm sharing one thing with you here. This is uh, what was referenced earlier on in the piece. This is some brilliant oh. footage from the game, from our streaker moment. We spoke about Jeremy Cameron, and uh, this is the moment Jeremy Cameron called him holding the ball. That's the pop right. Sorry, mate. That was a good chat tonight. 100, uh, 134 minutes. Uh, one hour and 34 minutes. Um, Probably the longest one we've done. I can't believe it. It's, it's quarter past twelve. Uh, geez, I'm going to have to. 
get up early tomorrow too. Um, well, it's been great. I've had, I've enjoyed that. I've had a good yeah, time tonight. Cooked. Oh my goodness! Yeah, mate. We're, I think we're going to have to load up more audio bites going forward, so I don't just have to keep spam. I'm sorry, Colin doesn't have to keep spam. Uh, Tommy Hawkins. Yeah, <laughs> it's been good, and clearly I dropped Tommy Hawkins' name a few times tonight, just just for the the soundbite. Um, no, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Colin? Colin, in the um, in the audio van at the back, visual audio visual unit. Um, thanks, Paul. No Great worries. Night. Thanks everyone in the chat. I can't believe we've still got 15 people in the chat at quarter past 12. Uh, you all are insane, but clearly you love the cats. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of the show. Paul, I'll see you on Sunday night, 100% for full enough mode. Looks like we've got an early contender based yeah, on the footage you just showed there. Possibly the umpire from the Collingwood, uh, the Bantry umpire from the Collingwood game. I'll let you make your call on that. Uh, there's a few games to be played out still uh, between now and, and Sunday night, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, thanks, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And that's See everyone.